Blind Spot Season 2, Episode 2, Heave Fiery Knot. Now, I love the ending. I love this episode in general, but the ending, like the last, I'd say, 15 minutes of this episode were really freaking great. We had, I believe this was actually a part of, like, the ending of the episode, but we have a surprise baby, which also kind of a surprise reaction. I didn't, I didn't really expect Weller to kind of just distance himself that way. I thought it would at least be sort of maybe this could work, maybe not. I have to I have to really think about it because things are, especially now, really freaking crazy. But it was just like, his response was to say what his mother used to say to him as a child, which really, really sucked. And it was like, you know, she used to tell me I'm just like my dad. And it's like, well, that's exactly the response. You know, that's all the response you really need. And that just really sucked. I was like, man, that was a crazy surprise. Then we have um, repressed memories coming up with Reed, which I... I don't know, I'm sure some people probably expected that, where maybe he'd have repressed memories, but in all honesty, I hadn't, I hadn't even remotely considered that, and it's mostly, I don't know, I mean, I guess it's because, you know, when they had that initial episode uh, in the last season, I guess because he seemed so confident, like, he just had no idea that certain things were happening, and he's, you know, going to his friends and stuff, and I just wasn't expecting that at the end of the episode, and... In a way, it's a cliffhanger. I mean, we know, you know, exactly what, we know what happened to him because of, you know, the case. But the way they ended it, where the guy's like, oh, that's why you're not, you know, messed up like us and, you know, struggling through life is because you just don't remember. And then they just have the crazy thing where he's just like freaking out and like stumbling over. Which the guy just let him walk away. Like he clearly just like shattered his mind. And he's just like, okay, stumble away. I'm just going to sit down. I was like, that's kind of messed up, like, if someone is, you know, if someone doesn't remember that, and you, like, you visually see you're the one who kind of reintroduced that part of his life to him, you should probably sit him down, don't let him just, like, stumble away and, you know, like, fall over and stuff, but that was crazy, I don't know where they're gonna take that, I'm very curious if he's gonna kind of go off the deep end, that's what I feel like might happen, because I think he is the character that's always been super, super calm, more than, you know, anyone else, really. He's the character that kind of stays calm, at least not counting, like, Patterson and um, the therapist, whose name, I, I can never remember his name, but not counting the two of them as far as characters that, like, go out into the field and stuff. He's always the one who's just super calm and he was like, okay, this sucks or that's crazy, but, you know, he goes through it. So this is going to change him. It's definitely going to change, and... I'm excited to see where they take it, because that was pretty nuts. Then, of course, we have the actual ending, um, where, for whatever reason, Jane gets kidnapped by her own brother. So, I don't know what the heck he's doing. I loved him in this episode, though. Like, you know, I mentioned in the premiere, it's like, all right, he killed those people because it's like, oh, you know, she's my sister. I, I have to make sure I protect her, not just for the mission, but because she's my sister. So, I was like, all right, that makes sense why he'd kind of go nuts on these people. And then in this episode... He just wanted to go see her, and he just, like, destroyed the two guys, and I was like, man, he really is insane, like, because they mentioned, a scene, there was a scene early on where they talk about his brother, um, Jane's brother, you know, him being homicidal, and I was like, yeah, he is, but it's not, like, crazy homicidal, I mean, it, it was kind of crazy, but it was like, in that specific situation, I was like, yeah, they did have to because he screwed up with the lie and everything, so they had to, you know, fight their way out of that situation, and then... It was like, I could give a little bit of reason to that. It's still crazy, but, you know, that's obviously the whole super secret organization. I'm not going to, you know, have an issue with that, you know, small moment. And then when he fights the two guys, I was like, wow, he's effing insane. Like, he just beat the crap out of those two. They kind of suck, or he's just amazing. It's one or the other, but he was kind of like Terminator during that scene. Like, he fought both of them. I think he beat the one guy up. Uh, the first guy, I feel like he took him out in, like, two hits or something. Like, he, he knocked the gun out of his hand, he punched the second guy, and then he, like, punched the first guy, like, once, maybe twice, and he was just down for the count. And then he just, like, obliterated uh, the other dude here, or he was about to. And it was just nuts. And it was just like, wow. I don't know if that was a part of the plan, if he was kind of given permission after what he did. And it's like, all right, he clearly wants to be with his sister. I feel she can handle it, but I also know that he can handle pretty much everybody in this entire, you know, facility. So, 
I don't know if that was just him. I feel like it's just him on his own, to be totally honest, just based on what we know of his character you know, in these two episodes. I feel like that ending was, he kind of lost it, and I don't know why he would kidnap her. Maybe it was some of his, you know, part of his suspicions, because he still has his suspicions, and uh, he brings up the mole thing again in this episode, like, all right, you know, kind of activate the mole just to make sure things are okay. And... I, you know, I'm not sure what he plans on doing. Maybe he's going to act like he's somebody else and say, like, oh, we found you and we know this and know that just to see what she says. But I don't... It's hard to tell. It's it's really hard to tell. But I would assume that this is... What is she doing? That's the dog downstairs. There's a new dog in the house. Um, so I, I don't really know. It's hard to tell. But like I said, I would assume that this is him being crazy and... It, it, like, it's really hard for me to tell what the point is, because at first, you know, in the last episode when he mentions activating the mole, the point was to make sure she was telling the truth, to make sure that Jane wasn't actually, like, double-crossing them. And then in this episode, he's like, activate the mole just to make sure she's safe. So it's like, you know, when he, get, when he gets to the end and he's, you know, drugging her and knocking her out, it's like, well, I, is he jumping back to the, you know, the first thing, or is this really crazy like I, I really can't understand this guy but I like his character he's a nice wild card element to all of this but I really did enjoy that um I like the dynamic of the team in this episode like everyone was kind of losing it uh Patterson was losing it on Nas um we also had the scene I think this was like halfway through the episode or maybe it was closer to the end but we find out that whether she's working as the mole or not she's listening in to the therapy sessions. She's getting extra information on the team and I, you know, who knows what that's about. Like, she's not officially a part of the team. She's working with the NSA still and I'm not 100% sure exactly what's going on there. Maybe it's like, hey, they worked with her so closely, her being Jane. Maybe they just want extra information on them. Maybe she is the mole. I kind of doubt it because they put that in there so early in the season. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, look at this super suspicious thing she's doing, and then it's just for some other crazy reason, and she still, you know, doesn't end up being the mole. Um, we do have a bit of reconciliation towards the end, though. Like, Weller kind of just, he's tired of all the crap, so he's like, we're working together. I don't really want Jane working here, but we have to do it to stop uh, Sandstorm. Patterson, stop, at, you know, freaking out over, you know, Nas and NSA stuff, just team up, Zapata, stop being mad at Jane, you guys team up, everything needs to freaking work, and ultimately, everybody listened to him because he yelled, and everybody made up, so that was nice, um, but I, I like the team dynamic, you know, they kind of worked through it, I feel like the stuff with Zapata and Jane should be very interesting, because they did kind of solve it, I was surprised they actually solved it in the second episode, I thought that would actually continue on for quite a while. But I'm actually okay that they kind of solve all their issues because we get to see this new team dynamic where it's like, all right, we have to trust her, but we don't like it. And she knows that we don't like it. And so even though they're working together as a team, it's still not the exact same dynamic. There'll just be like those little things every once in a while that'll make a big difference. So I'm excited about that. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting is that we didn't get to see the new director in this episode. They kind of made a point to show him um, at the end of the last episode, which I'm pretty sure that was the only scene he was in, um, in the premiere as well. I don't, he may have been in, like, some other scenes, but he really didn't show up in the premiere either. And as I, you know, as I was watching the episode, I was like, man, they have, you know, like, because Nas was in it so much, because, you know, they said her name, and plus, her name is Nas, and, you know, Weller said, like, stop messing with the NSA and Nas, and I was like, okay, well, that, I'll, that'll that help me remember it, because it's the same three letters. So... When that scene came up and everyone's talking and they're like, we have to work together as a team and stuff, and, you know, Weller was the one to do that, I was like, man, the director's absent, like, 100%. He didn't have a single moment at all in this episode. So I thought that kind of sucked, because he's, you know, he's, he is one of the new characters. He came in at the very end, you know, like, the last, I think he was only in the last two, if not just the last episode. I think it was the last two episodes, though. So we still, you know, have nothing on him. So... You know, I, I'm curious to see where, you know, what they do with his character and how things kind of play out. And now that we have the team going back to the tattoos, but kind of doing it in a bit of a different regard. Because in this episode, they were told to go after uh, the tattoos. 
that's another, you know, kind of a minor element, and it's like, alright, this is kind of Sandstorm fast-tracking some of the stuff they need to do. It's like, alright, this needs to happen right now, because for whatever reason, they needed to make sure that these people couldn't use these Stinger missiles on the plane, which is also a really good scene. That I, I think all the action was um, actually pretty well done. It was like they had a good little mystery at the beginning uh, with the woman where it's like, okay, this woman, Valentine, uh, whose name, honestly, I only remember because her last name is the same as a, one of my favorite video game characters. But it's like, okay, she's the bad guy. Excuse me, she's selling these weapons to the cartel and stuff. And then they get there, it's like, no, the cartel is going after her. It turns out to be her boss. And then she gets shot, which I was surprised she didn't die. I, like, I knew she was going to get shot. I was like, all right, she disobeyed Weller. She's going after her boss. It's a very emotional moment. She's dead. But it turns out that she does live, but she won't walk. Um... I don't know if that'll come into play. I feel like it might because it's not, oh, she's fine, and it's not, she died. She's there, but she's paralyzed. And I feel like that's a, a little string that they could pull on, you know, later in the season to bring, you know, if she, you know, does desk work or something minor, and they bring her character back in, and it could be sort of an emotional thing, something like that. But I like the episode of those. Definitely fun. I thought the action was well done. Like I said, those last, like, 15 minutes and all the you know, the baby stuff, which I feel like there's no way that's not going to come back. I know he was just like, you're going to be a great mom, you know, bye, but there's, it's a baby. Like, they might save that for the next season, depending on, you know, how much time they skip, because she's three months, so we'll say just the normal nine months, she has six months to go, but it's one of those things where it's like, there's no way in the world that that's not going to come back into play. Like, there's just going to be some part of it, and I really think it might tie into um, what they did, uh, just before that scene where Weller was, he still only somewhat confronted what was happening with his dad, so, or I guess what happened, you know, with his dad, so I still feel like there's a part of that that's going to come back up, and that'll kind of push him towards wanting to be a way better father than his father, because he lived all that time believing his father was a killer, which he was, and then he's like, oh, I was totally wrong, and now at the last second, you know, he realizes that he was right, and he's mad, I think even more now, for a, that little moment where they were happy together, and his father, of course, completely lied to the family, so I feel like it might come up again. Of course, like I said, the stuff with Reed, I don't know where they're taking it, but I would have to assume it's going to send him over the deep end. I don't know if he's going to end up killing this guy. I don't know how he'd even get, I mean, I know how he could get close to him, but that's just such an obvious trail that I think he'd be a bit smarter than that to just be like hey I want to see him and then he you know shoots the guy but something crazy is going to happen there I'm excited for it like I said I don't know what the heck um is going to be happening with Jane I can't think of her brother's name I want to say it's Roland or it's like Remy or something it's something with an R um <laughs> but I don't know what he's doing but I'm excited for that as well of course I want to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts or these favorite parts and Honestly, for me, the the cliffhanger with Reed, or I mean, I guess it's technically still a cliffhanger. I want to know where you guys think that's going to head because, you know, I already voiced my opinion. I'm pretty sure it's going to lead to him going off over the deep end, that the rest of the team is going to have to save him. It might end up being Zapata. She's always the one who knows, like, especially in this episode, like, he, when he was doing the stuff with the, um, with the case, when they had, like, the group meeting, he, like, just walked in the room and she looked at him. And I'm like, he's not even making a face this time. And she's got, like, some crazy, like, spider sense going on. Like, oh, something's wrong with Reed. So I feel like it might be her because they've kind of made a point to have that be the thing. Even if they did that multiple times in the last season as well. So I would assume if anyone's going to end up saving him, it's going to end up being Zapata. And it kind of makes sense with some of the stuff she did uh, in the last season. And, like, her gambling stuff and how crazy things ended up getting for her character. So... It, it makes sense in multiple ways, but I do think he's going to go off the deep end. Like I said, though, I want to know what you guys think is going to happen with Reed. And, of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.